Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. Upper right hand corner, we have Bate Toshko as the, I'm going to say peach. It's kind of a weird tan color. Oh man, they're doing close colors again, aren't they? So this is going to be on Eclipse. Yeah, he's the peach Protoss. Bottom left hand corner, we have Shafir as the somewhat close mustard yellow. This mustard yellow color seems to cause a lot of problems in my opinion. It's close to that other yellow. It's close to that other green. And I feel like it's somewhat confusable with this peach for comparison. I mean, not, it's, I think it's too close to the baseline Protoss colors. Maybe if they just banned certain streams of colors, that would be better. Anyway, we will move on. Had an interesting, by the way, live streaming these at Twitch backslash DiggySC. This is going to be, I think I'm just going to cover, for the people that are watching live, I think I'm just going to cover the first portion of these games as to not overdo it. And maybe try to nap and do some other things after that. We do see a pylon down for both players. This, I think the two gate opening tends to be a little bit more popular on Eclipse. Just because it is a two player map. And it's just to kind of keep your opponent honest. But it is a map that has a ramp. I don't know. We'll see. I take that back. Because I think... So it, the nice thing about going the two gate is you don't... It's kind of advantage versus disadvantage. One problem with going two gate is... You don't know where your opponent is sometimes, and sometimes if you're scouting last, it's a disadvantage. One advantage on a four-player map of going two gate or any sort of cheese or anything like that is that sometimes you're not scouted, right, until a little bit later. Um, I'm going to roll back my logic here and say that because it is Eclipse, because you have close scouting positions... Um, nope, I take it back. There's the two gate here from... So, cut me off there. I would think it would be more advantageous just to do the gas build here that we're seeing from Bate because you know you're going to get that scouting information. It's going to be a lot harder to deny it. And when you know that two gate's coming, it can be very easy to just get your first solid out, get that Dragoon out, and basically have everything in it, everything you need in place to defend it. You're just relying on your opponent to make a mistake. So Shafir has set up that pylon in position, but you can see that all the scouting information is, in fact, there. He's got his own scout moving inside the base. He sees the simulator. He sees the probes that are mining. But now that that first zealot's out, I think it's going to be, I mean, basically what it's going to have to happen, sometimes what you'll see is this. If this probe is not killed, or otherwise dealt with, with the two zealot attack, what you can do, if you can just micro it really well, you can bring those two zealots onto the ramp, or three zealots, however many zealots you have, and then bring the probe back across and harass it, uh, and add a little bit of damage right there. Second zealot being produced before the cybernetic score. I think for exactly that reason. We'll see. Two... This is going to be the three zealots, and we'll see if Shafir decides to move out with all of this. Yeah, he's going to go ahead and cycle around and move out. That probe is still remaining inside the base for Bate. He's got the assimilator up. But as you can see, that cybernetic score already warping in. We already have one zealot on the ramp, one to deal with that probe in case it sneaks back. And a th Oh, actually, he's producing three, so he's just going to build the inside three before the Dragoon, but that's still going to put him in a, posi uh, in a position where he should be able to defend this fairly easily and have a superior Dragoon count into the early game, which will put him in a strong position overall as far as defense goes so two zealots versus going to be versus these three probe is going to go ahead and make its way out to i think to maybe harass some oncoming zealots that might be making their way across second gateway being planted a little bit silent actually this gateway is not producing any units which has me a little bit concerned there you can see that probe using the mineral trick to go ahead and cycle back out some nice side micro from bate but i think he still might end up losing this ramp the probe trying to sneak back around and get engaged this. So yeah, that, yeah, losing the ramp because there was no Dragoon or additional units to support this. Just the way the build order lined up. So that is breached. He's going to lose some probes from this. And have disrupted mining. So Shafir getting up the ramp. One probe down, two probe down. Finally that Zealot getting taken care of. But that is going to give Shafir a little bit of a superior economy. Kind of a slight edge. He has more Zealots nearby. But now the Dragoons are starting to pour out. From Bate. Maybe a little bit of Miss Micro earlier. We'll see. Two Zalts making their way back across. Even if they... So they're going to try to push their way up the ramp. Even if they... Ooh. Is he just going to let it in? Didn't have the Zealot in the front. Usually this is a winning combination. He will have additional Dragoons spawning. But that... And it leading these units away. You can see this is exactly what you want to do. Is just go ahead and split that. Move them away from your probe line. Allow additional units to spawn. And then go ahead and deal with what's left. Needs to be careful. Is he going to lose another probe? Might lose another probe. The Zealot was actually waiting in the probe line. Does manage to get a kill there. 
Shafir actually doing a pretty good job of staying on top of the micro, or sorry, the macro aspect of this game as well. So even though he's going to be behind in the early Dragoon kind of positional game at this stage, he's still got two probes up. And he still has two Zealots uh, and two Dragoons to follow it. So he's got a superior army on the ground. So actually ending up slightly, ever so slightly ahead. Bate instantly throwing down a robotics facility. Citadel of a Dune coming down before Robo. So we might see some DTs. The other possibility, oh, re-engagement really fast. I think this was a mistake from Shafir. He's re-engaging. Did manage to get two Dragoon kills out of it, but loses all of his Dragoons as well. Three Zealots trying to engage on top of these Dragoons, and if he was going for any sort of early Citadel leg speed upgrade attack, something along those lines, uh, this is... He wanted to preserve as much army as possible. Instead, losing those Zealots. So now Bate with full map control, and this Dragoon needs to get back to home base rapidly. If Bate realizes it, yeah, I think he realizes he's like, you know what, I can take an expansion and press this now. There is the Templar Archives. I think... Maybe there was an opportunity for... I'm wondering if what Shafir is going for is, is that constant pressure harass where you just... You harass, your, you harass, you harass, harass. You try to force your opponent to continue to macro forward and then before they get an observatory, you have a DT out. Uh, usually you do that with three gates. But Temple Archives is out. Robo's here. Observatory is... The observer's being built. Now, this is not a guaranteed win for Bate. But he is in a very strong position. Shafir has enough units to defend his natural expansion. Ooh, Bate needs to be careful. Gonna lose a Dragoon for free. And now he's on the back end march. So here's the thing. This Observer, where does it go? Does it just hang out at the natural and go for a defense right there? At which point, I don't think these DTs are gonna get much accomplished. Or do they move across the map and open up an opportunity for those DTs to sneak back around? Because that, that can be the difference. We do have a Reaver being built as well. Units engaging. Bate uh, might lose that Zealot. Zealot with five kills. Wow. A veteran Zealot sacrificing himself for the cause there. Here's the other thing, though, is grabbing that Nexus and not having additional units. This Reaver's a ways off. So with the DT, they still might be able to smash this natural expansion. Maybe, well, probably won't get a kill on the Nexus, but might get some disruption otherwise. Bate sneaking forward, getting some pot shots. Shafir trying to pull this out. Where's the... Okay, there's the Observer. The Observer's in position to deal with these DTs, so honestly, I don't think these DTs are going to get a lot accomplished. Now, can Shafir salvage the situation, pull the DTs back as soon as that initial shot hits? Oh. He needs to... Oh, no, he's going to go for it. I was going to say, use it for map position. Instead, engaging, and... Oh, I think this might be game for Shafir. Because now there's a Reaver right there. Lost some additional Dragoons. He does have his own natural expansion up. But he lost both those DTs. So this is an extremely strong position for Bate. He's, yeah, and I think Bate realizes it. He's just planting some pylons out. Because he's like, the one thing that's going to get you back in this match is, and actually cancellation, I think, from Shafir. He's like, you know what? I need to take risks to get in this match. I need to just hope that Bate does not attack me and run me over right now. So I'm just going to cancel these cannons, get my Nexus up, try to catch up in the, uh, the economic game, planting... Two gateways, so that'll be four gateways total. That is going to give him a superior unit count or production count ability. He does, he did momentarily have the probe lead there by two, but he's way, way, way behind in the overall unit count. Plus, he doesn't have any reavers. This shuttle, as soon as it's up, I expect Bate to start moving and getting aggressive. And Shafir doesn't have, he'll have Psy Storm, but he's not going to have a High Templar with any sort of energy. I don't think he's going to have a storm in time, is really what it comes down to. And I think if Bate does get aggressive, I don't know that a Psy Storm will get it done unless it was perfectly hit anyway. So, I don't know, we'll see. There's a lot of factors here. Bate now moving out. Yeah, he's going to move out to that natural. We do have two DTs here, but you can see that's 54 energy that they're sitting there, working towards 55. So this is going to be critical, is does that Psy Storm come online in time for this engagement, or is Shafir going to have those Reavers and everything else in his natural doing all sorts of damage? One critical thing here, though, is his body has not taken his gas, whereas Shafir is mining that gas. Shafir wants that for those higher tier units, those high Templar, those additional... Uh, that can basically be, you know, it can be a tech difference. So a little bit of a... Looking for the positive things here for Shafir. But, engagement on the natural, we are actually... Psystorm just finished. 
So I take it back, the timing working out, and Reavers can be very, very vulnerable to, but keep in mind, High Templar are very vulnerable to Scarab Shots. There's a nice storm. It's gonna push a little bit back, took about half that shuttle, but that, re that Templar was taken out otherwise, and I think that might be too little. Good micro, another storm on top of those Reavers, the shuttle moving out. High Templar not taken out as well, and I just don't think those two swarms were enough. <clears throat> yeah, see, that's the thing. Even with the storm, it needs to be perfect. And I think that, yeah, that's GG. Well played by Bate. That's two very convincing wins for Bate. We'll see how he does in the winner's match. Shafir's going to move on to the loser's match. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We're going to go ahead and hop in to the other side of the match. Thank you for listening. Uh, would love feedback, by the way, on the playlist concept. And if people know how to just post a playlist, let me know. Because that's what I would prefer. If I could just post a playlist in my video feed and have the games unlisted so it's just not crowding things for people, I almost feel like that would be optimal. Anyway, moving on to the next match. Thanks for listening.